Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I'm going to show you how I made this really chunky looking solid sleeper bench out of just some scrap wood. So I picked up this large piece of sleeper wood um, from a skip. It had been thrown away and I've got a few other pieces of rough um, scrap wood there. So the first thing to do was to cut off the rough end of the sleeper. And for that I just used a handsaw. And now I'm going to go over it with a round over bit in my palm router to just soften up all the edges. And for the stretcher, I've got a piece of thick pallet wood and I'm going to round over the edges on that too. So now I'm going to cut down this stretcher. This is going to go along the bottom of the bench to um, support the legs and keep everything nice and rigid. And these are the legs I'm going to use and these are some scrap pieces of 2x6. So again, I'm going to cut off the rough edges of these. So now with the speed square, I'm just lining up the marks that I made on the first piece to match the second piece, and that will make the, uh, the total length of each leg. So now I'm going to cut down the stretcher in the mitre saw. And the same with the legs. So now I'm just working out the width that I want the stretcher to be. And now I'm cutting two feet. I'm going to put a bevel cut on the ends of these feet. And these feet are also made out of pallet wood. So I've put a 30 degree angle on the ends of these. And now once I've cut the first one, I'm just gonna match it up to the other piece to follow the same lines. And the same again with these feet, I'm just going to round them over across the tops just to give them a little bit of a design. So to attach the feet onto the legs, 
I'm going to use screws and to attach the top onto the legs, I'm going to use these coach bolts. So firstly, I need to attach the legs to the feet. So using a pencil, I'm finding the, the center points with the tape measure and then I'm just marking up to centralize these legs onto the feet. And I'm going to transfer those markings over to the other foot. I made a few marks for some pilot holes. So I'm going to drill all the way through these feet. I then added some glue. So now I could use those pencil marks to make sure that everything is centralized before screwing the feet to the legs. And I'm drilling down through the pilot hole into the legs as well. So then with the impact driver, I'm just going to drive these big screws down into the legs and just sink the heads of the screws slightly underneath the surface of the wood. So now I'm going to mark up where I want the stretcher to sit on the bottoms of these legs. So um, I'm just using an off cut of wood there as a guide line for the height of where I'm going to start to make the markings. So now with the, the ruler I'm going to centralize that and this off cut is the same thickness as the stretcher. And that will help to tie everything in at the bottom and keep it very rigid. So again, I'm just making a few marks here for some pilot holes. And I'm going to drill all the way through. So now I've got a larger drill bit and I've got a bit of tape on there as a depth gauge. And I'm going to drill down because I want to countersink the screws and then add a dowel over the top to hide the screw. So I'm just going to drill down about a centimetre and a half. So once that was done I was going to add some glue again as I did with the feet. And again, using those pencil markings, just to keep everything nice and centralized. And just drill down through the pilot hole into the stretcher and add some wood screws.
So now I'm going to add some dowels over the tops of these screws. So I'm adding plenty of glue in the holes. And just then tapping them in with a hammer. So now it was time to add the top to the legs. So after doing some calculations to centralize the top, so widthways and lengthways, um, I then transferred these calculations to the engineering square. And I've got two of them, one for the width, one for the length. And this just really helps to make sure everything is perfectly centralized. So now with a Japanese pull saw, I'm just going to take off those excess pieces of dowel. And now I need to transfer some markings to the top of the sleeper so that I can drill some pilot holes for the coach bolts. So finding the center of the leg, I'm just transferring the markings up to the top. And that gives me a central line to work with. And then again with the engineering square, I'm just going to work out where I'm going to drill some pilot holes. So I want to hide the uh, the heads of the coach bolts and for that I'm going to use these chunky pieces of dowel and I've cut a groove in them to allow some of the glue to come out under pressure and I'm going to use a forstner bit matching the uh, the diameter of these which is 22 millimeters with the dowels and uh, to make those dowels it is just a piece of broom handle an old piece of broom handle so I'm going to drill down probably three or four centimeters. And now I'm going to drill uh, a deep pilot hole going through the rest of the top and down into the legs too. And I've added a washer to the coach bolt just to help to grip the sleeper. And I'm going to use the impact driver to drive these down. And then I just hand tightened the bolts to make sure they were nice and tight. So now I wanted to make up a bit of wood filler. And for that I've used some of the sawdust from my sander. And I'm just going to use some wood glue and mix it all together. And that will give me a nice fine paste. And I want this so that I can add these dowels. Um, they are a good fit, but they're not super tight. So I'm just going to add some filler around these dowels and in the holes to make sure it's a really snug fit. And then I'm just going to tap them down with a hammer. And that groove that I cut in there earlier will allow some of the... Uh, the excess glue to come out under pressure. So once that was all dry, I used the pull saw again to uh, cut off the excess pieces of dowel.
So now it was time to give it all a really good sanding down. So I started off with um, a 40 grit and worked my way up to about 120 grit. And I just took my time with this. Um, I could have done with a belt sander, but I don't have one. So um, I just made do with what I had. And then I finished it with a, a detail sander on about 120 grit. And then I finished it off by hand with a 240 grit sandpaper. If you're going to use a bench like this for outdoor use, you don't need to go this fine. You could just get away with, say, 80 to 100 grit. Um, but this is actually going to be used indoors. So I wanted to make it nice and smooth. So I'm finishing it off here by hand. And just giving it all a brushing down ready for adding the finish and for the finish I'm going to use some linseed oil and this was the most satisfying bit where you get to see the grain coming through and uh, you just don't know how it's going to look until you add the oil so I was surprised how it looked. I think when this piece of wood, this sleeper was cut, um, I suppose it was cut on a, a big sort, sort of bandsaw type machine. Um, I think there was quite a bit of friction because it almost looks as if parts of it have burnt, which is actually quite an interesting look. So I was pleased with how the oil brought out the, uh, the character in the wood. And again here with this uh, piece of pallet wood, and these two by sixes. So then I'll just give it all a rubbing down once the oil had a few minutes to soak in. And the only thing left to do was to give it a test. So that's about it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please remember to like and also consider subscribing for more DIY related content and as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.